Hello guys, let's talk about the atmosphere, all the air around us and above us. So the atmosphere consists of the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere and the thermosphere. And what's interesting about it is that as we increase the altitude, so go higher and higher above, the temperature varies greatly. We live most of our lives in the troposphere and commercial aircrafts actually typically fly around 10 kilometers above earth so around the so-called tropopause so the tropopause shows us a part of the atmosphere which is a temperature extreme boundary so this divides the troposphere from the stratosphere. In the troposphere, as we go higher and higher, the temperature decreases. So this way, so the temperature decreases to about 220 degrees in Kelvin, around 10 kilometers above the Earth. Now, after that, as we go from the tropopause into the stratosphere, the temperature starts increasing again. So it increases back up, up to the tropopause, again, the part of the atmosphere that divides the stratosphere from the mesosphere. In the mesosphere, the temperature start decreasing again. And they start increasing again in the thermosphere. Quite interesting, right? So these parts, these separations in the atmosphere are really, really important because those represent boundaries in which the gases mix extremely slowly. So when we have pollutants in the troposphere, right, around us, it's going to mix into or go into the stratosphere very, very slowly. Now, let's talk about the pressure a little bit. As we increase the altitude, right here we are going to decrease the pressure so the pressure is shown right here and we know that atmospheric pressure is around 760 torrs and as we increase the altitude it's going to go down 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 and close to almost zero now, because of this, 99.9% .9 mass percent of the atmosphere is actually located in the troposphere, so below about 10 kilometers, and in the stratosphere, which is below about 50 kilometers. And 70% of that mass is located in the troposphere only, so around us. Now, this is because heavier atoms and molecules will sink in the atmosphere, leaving the lighter atoms and molecules at the top of the atmosphere due to the Earth's gravitational field. But the Earth's atmosphere higher above is also very interesting because it's constantly being bombarded by radiation and energetic particles from the sun. And that is going to have profound chemical and physical effects, especially in the upper region above about 80 kilometers. And one of those effects is visible to us, the northern line. So here you have a picture from Estonia. They are really, really beautiful. Now, let's talk about the composition of the atmosphere. So near sea level, we are going to have mainly nitrogen. Here we have the mole fraction, so 0 0.78, which is about 78% of the atmosphere is actually nitrogen around us. Then we are going to have close to 21% oxygen, close to 1% argon, and everything else is going to be only in trace amounts. So you can see that those numbers are really, really tiny. So when we are talking about the concentration of different gases in trace amounts, it's not very useful to use mole fraction or even percentage. What we want to use is ppm or parts per million. And we talked about this before in connection to aqueous solutions. And we said that the concentration unit ppm refers 
to grams of substance per million grams of solution. Now, when we are dealing with gases, one ppm is going to mean that we are going to have one mole of that constituent, of that gas, in one million moles of air. Now, let's try to do a practice problem. Let's calculate the concentration in ppm of water vapor in a sample of air which has the partial pressure of water 0 0.60 torr and the total pressure of air is 760 torr. Now, do you remember when we dealt with gases, we discussed partial pressure and total pressure. And we know that we can calculate the partial pressure of the gas using the following formula. So pH2O, so the partial pressure of water, equals to the mole fraction, so chi of H2O, multiplied by the total pressure. Now, we know the partial pressure of water right and we know the total pressure so we can figure out what is the mole fraction of water in this air sample so chi h2o equals to the partial pressure of h2o divided to the total pressure of the air sample let's plug in the volumes so 0 0.60 torr divided by 760 torr that is going to give us 7.89 times 10 to the negative fourth and the torrs will cancel out so we have no units for the mole fraction now how do i calculate ppm from here well, I just simply multiply it by 10 to the 6th, right? A million. So 10 to the 6th. So 7.89 times 10 to the negative 4th multiplied by 10 to the 6th is going to give us 789 ppm. It's way more convenient to use PPMs than mole fractions or even percentages when we are talking about trace gases in the atmosphere. All right, I hope this makes sense. See you in the next video. Thermosphere, in the thermosphere, in the thermosphere, in the thermosphere.